Hi there, in this video we're going to read a story for children in Dutch and the level will be about for A2, so that's for advanced beginners and while I will be reading, so I'll first read the first paragraph and second paragra paragraph and so on and uh, after the first paragraph I will translate the, um, the sentences, sentence by sentence and I'll pinpoint some of those things that are typically difficult for A2 um, beginners, so for advanced beginners. Uh, so uh, let's start by reading, so the three kleine biggetjes, so that's the title, the three little piglets. All right, so first paragraph. Ooit bouwden drie kleine biggetjes een huis om te kunnen slapen, zoals iedereen. Eén van hen besliste om zo snel mogelijk een huis te bouwen, zodat hij de hele dag piano kon spelen. Hij werkte zijn huis met een paar planken en wat hooi in één dag af. Alright, so translation. Uh, once three uh, small piglets built a home to be able to sleep, like everyone else, one of them decided to build uh, as quickly as possible a house so he could play the piano for the whole day. He worked, uh, he finished his house with a few um, planks and a little bit of hay in one day. All right, what is difficult here? Well, for starters, when you're using oid, like something with time, uh, you have to use the inversion. So, three kleine biggetjes, three little piglets, built and once. So when you have uh, like a, an adverb of time, you have to use the inversion. And another difficult that's a little bit difficult is om te. Uh, when you're using two verbs uh, with two in between, like in order to, then you're going to use om te. All right, besliste, very difficult uh, verb to decide. And zo snel mogelijk, as fast as possible. Uh, literally, but mind there's no second as here. Uh, om zo snel mogelijk een huis te bouwen. And here you see as well the construction om te. And this construction om te, as you could see here, in order to. Uh, om uh, and te are split up because you only write the infinitives at the end uh, after te. And the rest of the sentence you have to put in between om and te. Zodat hij de hele dag piano kon spelen. Uh, zodat, so that, he could play the piano the whole day. And here, zodat, is uh, one of those things that uses the catapult construction. Uh, you can see uh, here somewhere on top that there's a link to the video where you can uh, where you can learn more about this catapult construction and it basically means that after certain words like so that because uh, while the verbs go at the end of the sentence both verbs so kon spelen and kon is the past tense of kunnen so that's the uh, imperfectum uh, that's also a little tricky for many students Next sentence, hij werkte zijn huis met een paar planken en wat hooi in één dag af. Um, wat hooi means a little bit of hay. It's well, a bit the same as een paar, but uh, wat means a bit of. Een beetje hooi you can also uh, uh, use here. And something else, hij werkte zijn huis af. Afwerken. This is one of those separable verbs, which basically mean that the verb is split up in two parts. Uh, hij werkte, so he uh, worked, but if you have this little particle at the end, uh, hij werkte af. Uh, again, there will be a little hint here uh, for the separable verb if, verbs if you're interested to learn more about them. 
zo. Uh, een paar planken, also a few planks. Um, this doesn't mean a pair of plank, pla uh, planks. Well, it can actually mean, but uh, we use een paar to say some planks. All right. Uh, so instead of sommige, which, which means more certain, uh, use een paar planken, a few planks. All right, next paragraph. Hoe leuk is het niet om in mijn eigen huis piano te kunnen spelen, zei hij. Ik ga het aan mijn broertjes vertellen. Op weg naar de anderen dacht hij aan welke liedjes hij allemaal zou spelen. En dan kwam hij zijn broer tegen. Die was ook een huis aan het bouwen. Alright. How much fun is it uh, to uh, have my own house uh, to be able to play the piano, he said. I'm going to tell my brothers, or my little brothers. On the way to the others, uh, he thought on which songs he would all play. And then he saw his brother. This one was also building a house. Uh, hoe leuk, how much fun, um, is het niet om in mijn eigen huis piano te kunnen spelen? That's rather straightforward. Uh, and then, broertjes, if you have a word ending with tje, and it's the same for biggetjes, that's a, a diminutive, my little brothers. And you can usually uh, use this when you're saying pet names to your loved one or when you're um, talking about kids and with kids. All right. Uh, on the way to the others, uh, dacht hij, and here again you have an inversion, op weg naar de anderen, dacht hij. Hij dacht, the he is not at the beginning of the phrase, so uh, you would use the inversion. Because this is, uh, it comes before the verb. Op weg naar de anderen dacht hij. Um, in English you would say, on the way to the others, he, on his way to the others, he thought about which songs, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so mind there that you use the inversions. Uh, he thought about which songs... Liedjes, that's a very hard word to remember because you think, ah, this will be something like sing or song. Well, a song, that's a liedje. And this is also always, well, or almost always used in the diminutive. All right? Hij allemaal zou spelen. He would play. Spelen, play. And then kwam hij zijn broer tegen. And then, here again, separable verb, tegenkomen, to meet, or to see, uh, and then he met his brother. So again, separable verb, and the second part goes at the end. Tegenkomen. Die was ook een huis aan het bouwen. He was also building a house. And here, something many students, um, well, it's a bit challenging for them, aan het bouwen, when you're using the past continuous, he was building, then we're going to use uh, the verb zijn in the past tense and aan het bouwen, uh, building. And here you have the normal infinitive plus aan het. And in the present tense it would be die is ook een huis aan het bouwen. That's a little bit tricky. Right, next paragraph. Die broer wou niet onderdoen voor zijn andere broers en maakte een groot huis. De eerste broer zei hem, wel, ik heb een kleiner huis, maar wat een resultaat. Kom maar wanneer je wil. De tweede broer dacht aan hun derde broer. Misschien kunnen we hem bezoeken. Alright. This brother didn't want to, um, to, be, to be seen as a lesser one uh, for his other brothers or by his other brothers and made a big house. The first brother said, well, I have a smaller house, but what a result. Come whenever you want. The second brother thought about their third brother. Maybe we can visit him. All right. So, onderdoen, 
a little difficult word to be um, when you're in, in a competition and you want, don't want to be seen as the lesser one, then you would say onder doen. All right, for their other brothers, and maakt een groot huis. Uh, and then, uh, what is also usually tricky is the comparative. When you're you're using the comparative, uh, in English you would usually say smaller or more small. And there are some words that are typically difficult, like for more important, belangrijker, then we're also going to use the er construction in Dutch. More uh, important, meer belangrijk, mm -mm, no way. But what result? Kom maar wanneer je wil. And the maar here, uh, kom maar wanneer je wil, come whenever you want, it doesn't mean but. Maar is also used with the imperative. Kom maar wanneer je wil. And that's the imperative, come whenever you want. And here, ah, the maar doesn't mean but. All right. Uh, de tweede broer dacht aan hun derde broer. Misschien kunnen we hem bezoeken. And here, again, maybe, at the beginning of the sentence, what do we do? Ha, inversion. Misschien kunnen we hem bezoeken. Maybe we can visit him. Uh, kunnen we, in English you would put the we in front of the kunnen. Men bezoeken. And that's the uh, other thing many uh, students uh, have to pay attention to. When you're using a second verb, kunnen bezoeken, for example, the verb will usually be at the end. All right. Maybe we could visit him. <laughs> so in English, it's completely different. All right. Next paragraph. Let's put it on the board. Tuurlijk, en weg waren ze. Die derde broer maakte een stenen huis. Waarom? vroegen de twee. Dat zal je later zien, antwoordde de derde broer. En terwijl de twee muziek gingen spelen, werkte de derde verder. Of course. And away they went. The third brother made a... A uh, uh, house made out of stone. Why? The two asked. Well, you will see later on. The uh, third brother replied. And while the others went to play music, the uh, third continued to work. All right. Uh, this an steenen huis, a house made out of stone. Uh, you have here the word steen. And when you can determine the material in which something is built, then you just use the, uh, the core uh, word and you add an. Uh, for example, an houten huis. That's a wooden house. A house, with, and a house made out of wood. Right? Um, and next. Uh, Terwijl is one of those words that uses the catapult, so it means that the verbs will be at the end of the sentence, here. And while the others two went to play music, uh, and here in English you hear it, music is at the end, but here we put it uh, in front of the two verbs. And here, uh, something that many students ask, how do you translate to continue? And continue is, well, not as easy to translate, uh, in, but in this case, the derde uh, brother, third brother, continue to work. Verder uh, werken. And verder uh, lopen, you also have, for example, to run on or to continue to run. So that's the notion you can use uh, to say to continue to work. And you recognize here, ver is far. And further, he worked further. Sounds a little strange in, uh, in English. All right. The next. Toen opeens een wolf verscheen. Ze renden weg, elk naar een huis. De wolf keek naar het eerste huis en duwde het gewoon omver. Het broertje vluchtte naar het tweede huis. Maar ook dat huis brak de wolf gewoon af. En dus vluchten beiden naar het stenen huis van hun derde broer. Alright. 
And then suddenly a wolf appeared. They ran away, each to their house. The wolf looked at the first house and just simply pushed it, um, pushed it uh, to the ground. The brother uh, fleed to the second house, but also that house, the wolf simply broke down. And so they fleed both to the, st uh, the house made out of stone of their third brother. So I'm sure you're really getting excited here to hear how the story will end. But let's focus on the Dutch. Toen, one of those words that put the verbs at the end. Uh, verschijnen, to appear. Uh, they ran away each to their house. The wolf looked at the first house and duwde het gewoon omver. Um, duwen, omver duwen, again, a separable um, verb. So, say, uh, the second part uh, you can just put at the end, uh, push to the ground or <coughs> simply uh, just push until it's broken. Omver duwen. The little brother fleed to the second house. Also that house, the wolf simply tear, tear, uh, tore, he tore the house down. That's maybe a good translation. Omver duwen, to push to the ground and afbreken, again, separable verb. Uh, the wolf uh, broke it down. Uh, we, or he torn, he had torn it to pieces. And here again, but also that house, and then inversion. But also that house, the wolf broke down. Uh, the wolf is here behind the verb. And thus vluchten beiden naar het zenuwhuis van hun derde broer. Uh, beiden, both. Sometimes you will see it as beide. And that's when you add. A, uh, a noun, so beide broers, then you're going to use beide. And here you don't have a noun, so you, you can use beiden. Uh, so the n at the end here, whoop, that's the n, you can use it if there is no noun behind. You can also say beide here. Alright, final paragraph, and finally we're going to know what's going to happen with our three uh, piglets. And die sloot de deur snel. De wolf dacht, hoe kom ik hier binnen? Hij klom op het dak en sprong in de schoorsteen. En plons, hij viel in een pot kokend water. Hij schreeuwde en kwam niet meer terug. Zie je wel, zei de derde broer, stenen huizen duren het langst. De twee broers knikten en bedankten hun broer voor zijn hulp. Uh, die, de third brother, quickly... Uh, locked the door. The wolf thought, how do I come inside here? Uh, he um, he um, climbed on the roof and he uh, jumped in the, uh, in the, uh, well, in the chimney and plons, that's the sound that he makes, and he fell in a pot boiling water. Hmm. He screamed and didn't come back. And now you see, said the third brother. Uh, houses made out of stone last longest. The two brothers agreed and thanked their brother for his help. All right, uh, die. This is uh, this means this or that with the words. So some words have the article de, some have the article uh, het, uh, and then you have a noun. For example. Uh, De scho die schoorsteen, that chimney. All right, but here you don't see another uh, noun, so that means it refers to this third brother. Uh, so and so that they flee both to this, uh, the house of the third brother, and that one and that brother uh, quickly locked the door. Uh, die, so that one. The wolf thought, how do I come inside? He klom op het dak, uh, on the, uh, the roof, and jumped in the chimney. And plons, he fell in a pot, uh, in a pot of cooking water. And here, kokend, we've seen aan het. Hmm? 
a little bit more above here. Die was ook een huis aan het bouwen. That one was also constructing or building a house. So that's the, uh, the uh, participle in English, building. But this is for the past, uh, past continuous. But if you're using it with a noun, like a cooking, cooking water, then you're not going to use an het bouwen. This is for the present continuous, or so the past continuous, and this is with nouns, and we form it in a different way then. And you can recognize it at the unt here. Um, Kookend water, boiling water. All right, so uh, remember, present uh, continuous, past continuous, aan het plus infinitive, and unt, or you just add the d here, uh, koken, that means to boil. Uh, de kokend boiling water. Alright, so pay attention, not the same. Hij schreeuwde en kwam niet meer terug. He shouted and then come back. Uh, niet meer. You can translate it as not anymore. He didn't come back anymore. Zie je wel, zei de derde broer Stenenhuizen, duren het langst. Uh, duren to endure, to, to last. And the two brothers knikten, and that's the, well, that's what you, the, the movement you make with your head when you say yes. So you agree, and you, you make a movement with your head up and down, and that's uh, knikken. And they thanked their brother for his help. Hun, tricky word to remember, their. They thanked their brother, the brother of them for his help. So, hun, very, very difficult. So, I hope you appreciate it. This, was, this um, story was suggested by one of the people on this platform. So, feel free to uh, put your own suggestions and let me know what uh, you think of this story and this format. And see you in another video.